Put your eyes outside the door Let them fill you with the Holy Ghost And everything that is not of him Let them do with it Cause heaven is right above you God is willing to download to you His spirit abundantly just for you and me Welcome home. If you're in the city of Johannesburg, we would really love to have you visit us on a Sunday. 107 Scorpion Trail, Mnandi, Midrand. Or watch us online from wherever you are in the world as we bask in the glory of God. See you at church at 9 a.m. 107 Scorpion Trail, Midrand. Lifting up our hands in awe of you, our God. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Our hearts are filled with fragrance. We pour it out to you, declaring you are God. And none can take your Sing over, 
so man tatata longe si para mi so tu moguwe si para mi so tu moguwe ubuko singoba ko wele so man tatata longe si para mi so tu moguwe si para mi so tu moguwe ubuko singoba Hallelujah. So, shall we pray as we get into the word of the living God? Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you that you are our God. As we come before your presence, we, we worship you for who you are. We honor you. We submit ourselves to the authority of the Holy Spirit. And we submit ourselves to the authority of your word. We say, minister to us, my God, in the name of Jesus. Father, may you begin to work a work in our lives that only God can do. We thank you. We honor you. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you into this service. We say glorify the Father in this service. Glorify Jesus in this service. Glorify the Father through the word. Glorify the Father through that which you are doing as you move, as you touch the lives of your people, as you release the power of God into their lives and into their situations. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. So today I want to, us to start on a journey, on a series. Uh, I don't know how long it will take us. It may be another two or three months. But I want to, us to go on a journey, uh, on a series that I have themed Demonstration of Power. You, you know, our God is powerful. But many times we live our lives as if he is a powerless God. And sometimes when you listen to believers as they talk about what the devil is doing, you'd almost think that the devil is more powerful than God. When you look at the life of an average believer, it's almost like the, you see the evidence, the witness, the testimony of the harassment of the devil. And you ask yourself a question. If God is greater than the devil, why are the people of God so tortured? by the enemy? Why is there less of the evidence of what God is doing and more of the evidence of what the devil is doing? And I believe that as we get into the word of God, our lives are going to be changed. Your, your life is going to be framed. There will be more of the evidence of the greatness of God, the might of God, the power of God, more than what the enemy is doing because the word of God frames your life. As you receive the word, as you accept the word, it begins to work in your life. And, the, and God who says, I watch over my word to perform it, it will perform it in your life. You begin to see evidences of the might of God. You begin to see evidences of the grace of God. You begin to see evidences of what God is doing. And I'm believing God that we will see as we, as we go on, as we study the word, as we stay in the word, we'll begin to see that our God is great. Not seeing him theoretically, but experiencing him in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So our anger scripture in, uh, our anger scriptures for this series will be 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. It says, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. 
My message, my preaching was not with the wisdom, persuasive words of men. And Paul was talking to a people. You see, in Corinth, these people were known for as rhetoricians, people who could speak, people who knew we had perfected the art of speaking. So they were philosophers who were known for their oratory. One of the things that the, the Paul was going disdained was because he, he was not as uh, he was not philosophizer, he was not as persuasive. He, his communication was not as uh, as as, uh, as smooth and as sweet as the philosophers of Corinth. So they look down on him and he says, look, guys, I didn't come to you in the power of the wisdom of men. I didn't come to you in the, in the persuasive ways because I don't want my, your faith to be built on the wisdom of men. You know, many times in church we have uh, pastors I have become almost motivational speakers. They are good at words. There is a lot of nice talk, but there is no evidence of the power of God. But Paul is saying, I did not come to you with the persuasive words of men, but I came to you in the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And the church should leave it in a demonstration of the power of God. The church of the living God should demonstrate that God is mighty, that God is great, that his arm is not, is not shortened, that his arm is strong and is powerful. And that's how we should live. And we are believing God that as we begin to move into what God is saying, as we begin to allow the word of God to fulfill itself in our lives, we begin to live our lives in a demonstration of power. In other words, when you, whenever you walk, whatever you do, wherever you are, whether it is in the marketplace, whether it is in the home, there should be evidence of the power of God. There should be evidence that Jesus is alive. There should be evidence that God is greater than the devil. There should be evidence when people look at your life, they should be talking about the glory of God. When people see your career projection, they should be able to say that their God is great. God has done awesome things. Hallelujah. And in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, which is our other anchor scripture, it says, for the kingdom of God is not made a matter of talk, but of power. It's not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. You know, when, when you think about the kingdom of God, many people focus on church, but they don't understand that we are a kingdom. And Jesus, the king of kings, the lord of lords, is the head of that kingdom. And when you look at the Christianity as a kingdom, you have to understand that you, when you look at life, it's really a, a, a clash of kingdoms because kingdoms want to assert themselves. Kingdoms have a glory. Kingdoms have a, have a wealth. When you look at Buckingham Palace, I mean, I, I remember people telling me, you know, if you go to Buckingham Palace, you'll see this place is the gates are of gold and so because it speaks to the world, it speaks to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the to the might of the British Empire. But you see, the strength of any kingdom is demonstrated by and characterized by three things. Number one, it's demonstrated by its superior power. The, the power of the kingdom. There is a kingdom power that must be evident. When we talk about the gospel, it has to be preached in the power of the kingdom. We must, there must be evidence. You see, many people despise the church. The church has become irrelevant because it is a lot of talk. But there is no power. There is no evidence that demonstrates that there is a power in this thing. But you see, when you, when you have a clash of kingdoms, it is the power, it is the strength, it is the, the military might, the strength of that kingdom that matters. That's why you find that whenever kings visited, people will be showing their, around, showing their strength, showing their military prowess and so on, because they are demonstrating power. Hallelujah. Sometime in this year, I mean, the, 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 the Soviets, they, 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 the, the Russians, I think, they, or is it the, whatever, the Soviets, no, there are no Soviets anymore, is it? Yeah. I think, okay, whatever. The, 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 the Russians, I, I don't even know, was it the Russians or the Chinese? One of them, but I think it was the Chinese. Actually, they flew one of their military planes nonstop from, from their country all the way to, to South Africa. Just as a demonstration of power. And this is at the time when people were, were talking about the, the Russian-Ukrainian war. And the Chinese have kind of uh, associated themselves with the Russians. So they just flew this plane as a demonstration of their capability. Say, look, this is how far we can go with our plane without even stopping to fuel it. So they just flew it, packed it here, had a few talks and they flew back. What were they doing? They are demonstrating the power and the strength of their kingdom. Now here is my question. Is there anything in your life that actually demonstrates to the other kingdom that there is power? You see, I want you to understand that as we go through this teaching, I believe that 
God is going to frame our lives, to frame your life. You'll begin to see your life being surprised by the working of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. I think that was a good introduction. So let's go on to my session today. So, I want to talk to you today. What I was doing was just doing an intro to the, to the series. And today I want to talk to you about a message called Imitating Christ. You know, I, I remember I got born again in 1982, and I remember 1983, I mean, we were a little bit crazy, and we, and, uh, we once in a while, you know, the school where we were, we, we had, uh, so many things were happening. Many people would spend their time running away, going to the beer hall, some people going to all kinds of places, and we would get out of the school grounds to go to all these kinds of places. But uh, my friends and I would spend our time getting out of the school grounds and going to church. And, uh, and we had uh, some interesting encounters with the principal around it. I think we were a little bit zealous. Some of the things we were doing were a little bit stupid. Now looking back with the wisdom of age, uh, I think we were a little bit crazy. I will not say much because there are one or two people who have uh, a little bit of knowledge of uh, our crazy days. But anyway, I'm not talking about crazy days. Let's talk about, so one of these days, way back in 1983, there was a, a crusade which was, uh, which was run by uh, a, a preacher. And this crusade was in, it was uh, in Mutari. I think it was the Mikos Hotel. And we were ushers in, in there and we were, and there we were. And the very first night, you know, we have prayed for the crusade. We have prayed and we are believing God. And this minister comes up and he says, uh, the moment he is introduced and he, he stands up and he says, I'm going to read from Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. Then he says, before I read the Bible, I want to show you why you should listen to me. I want to show you why the God I serve is a great God. So I want to pray for somebody who is sick and they are going to be healed. So he says, I wonder if there's somebody who is blind, who is deaf, or who is dumb to come forward and I'll pray. If I pray for them and they are not healed, then don't bother listening to me. And now we, we, we little ushers, we, we are scared to the end. We say, this guy is killing the five-day crusades. Why, what if this nobody is healed? What if nothing happens? And, and you know, I have never prayed in my life. It was not a prayer of faith. It was a prayer of saying, God, you have to do something. This guy is, is killing these crusades. We have worked so hard. We have booked this place. And people are here. And now if nothing happens, what's going to happen? People are waiting. And you know, we prayed, I tell you. Part of our prayer was not that the, the person may be healed. We were praying that there will be no blind person or, or deaf person. <laughs> we, we were praying that nobody responds to the altar call. And unfortunately, <laughs> somebody did respond. <laughs> and, and, we, and we upped the temple. We started praying, you know, shaka and we and people thought these guys were so spiritual. I think it was, but I think we were spiritual, but spiritual because of fear. But, but you know, it, it, it's amazing that when this, this guy didn't even go and pray for five minutes, he just said, Father, show yourself. And that person was completely healed. Amen. That's a demonstration of power. I'm not talking about a foolishness of just going to try to demonstrate something. You can't do that unless God has clearly told you. You can't challenge the forces of darkness until you, unless you know that God has actually given you a mandate. Yes. Hallelujah. So, that was my introduction to, to a life of power. So I want to talk about imitating Christ because you see, whatever we do in this life, it has to follow after Christ. Christ is our example. So I want us to, as we talk about the demonstration of power, we want to look at the life of Christ. And I'm going to do it very quickly in a way that is very simple. And, and by the way, I'm not trying to be complicated in this message. I'm just laying the framework and then we'll build on it as we go. In Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 4, this is what the Bible says. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the Father's 
by the prophets has spoken in these last days to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Remember the Bible says that in First, in first Corinthians 4.20, it says that, you know, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, it's a matter of power. And the, here we are being told that the, Jesus upholds all things by the word of his power. His word is not just talk, it's a word of power. But I want you to understand that the Bible says here that in these last days, God has spoken to the world. His voice has been in the person of Christ. So Jesus is the personification of the Father. That's why you would say, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because Jesus, the Bible says that he, he is the express image, the brightness of God's glory, the express image of the person of the Father. So whatever Jesus did, he came to show the Father. He came to show the Father's will. He came to show the Father's intention. He came to exemplify and to reflect what God wants to see on earth. That's why we, we, are, we are looking at Jesus and we want to imitate him. And we take our cue from John chapter 20 and verse 21. And this is what Jesus says. As he was leaving the earth, he says, God the Father has given me an assignment. And as I have this assignment, now I have finished my lot. I have finished my part. Now I'm going to leave. And this is what he says in John 20 and verse 21. He says, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, so send I. So he's saying, I'm sending you into the world in the same way that the Father has sent me. The Father sent me to redeem, to heal, to save, to deliver, to make a difference, to confront the forces of darkness. In the same way I am sending you into the world. So if we have been sent the same way that he has been sent, we can only achieve what we have been sent to do if we do it the way he, has, that he did it. That's why we must imitate Christ. That's why we must model our lives. That's why we must model our ministry. That's why we must model what we do after Christ. Because the only way we can achieve the assignment is to do it the way he did it. Listen to what the Bible says about Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 24, it says this. It says, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, by miracles, sorry, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know. So he is saying that, you know, Jesus was authenticated. Jesus was, 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 was confirmed as who he was by the demonstration of power by signs and miracles. So God anointed him with power so that he was able to do incredible things. If the church is the body of Christ, if the church is the representative of Christ, if the church is the continuation of what Jesus started, then the church will be authenticated by God, will be attested to by God by signs, wonders, and miracles. And I believe that the church of Jesus Christ in these last days, including this local church, will have to move into that place of power, that place of being attested by God. I'm not talking about God attesting of a person. I'm talking about God attesting of his church, the body of Christ, the fullness of Christ. As we begin to see miracles, as we begin to see power, as we begin to see signs and wonders, because that's what God does. If we are to imitate Christ, we must see in our lives, we must see in our body corporate exactly what was seen in Jesus' time. If we don't see that, then it means God is a liar. And I say that with boldness. Because God himself said, talking of Jesus, says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we as believers, we claim that Jesus is alive because he is. So if he is alive, you still do in his church what he used when he was here physically. Are we together? So we say we are imitating Christ. So if we're imitating Christ, it means Jesus is our pattern. The Bible says in John chapter 13, verse 15, it says, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. This is when he was washing the feet of the disciples and before he was crucified, he says, what I have done to you, I'm giving you as an example. He says, if you do not believe the works of my father, so if I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. In other words, he is saying the way for me to be authentic is for me to be doing the works of the father. The way for the church to be authentic is for it to work to do the works of the father. And I believe that the church of Jesus Christ has lost credibility because it stopped doing the works of the father. It's working 
from a philosophical perspective. It's all talk. But we saw in the Bible that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, it's a matter of power. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? So we imitate Christ by doing the works of the Father. The second way that we imitate Christ is by fulfilling the Father's will. Listen to Jesus. John chapter 5 verse 30 says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Remember we're talking about if you are, the church is going to represent the Father, if it's going to do what the Father is calling it to do, we need to not, we, we shouldn't be self-representing. We should not be trying to advance ourselves. We should not be self-promoting. What do we see? in the body of Christ and in the church world is sometimes is laughable. You find people who are promoting themselves, people who are just talking about themselves. But you see, when we talk about the demonstration of power, we are not talking about you. It's not for your glory. It's for the glory of the Father. Anybody who says they do miracles and they are not giving glory to God, you have to doubt their authenticity. You have to doubt whether they are from God because whoever is used by the Spirit of God, if the miracles you do, if the things that happen in your life are a product of the Spirit of God, the Bible says the spirit will draw witness to Jesus and he will glorify the father. So if it is the work of the Holy Spirit, the father will be glorified. Jesus will be glorified. If I'm drawing to, to, uh, attention and glory to myself, then it's not of the Holy Spirit. Are, are you listening to me? So I do not seek my own will, but I seek the will of the father who sent me. So we imitate Christ by seeking to pursue and to advance the will of the Father. In John 6, 38, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So if we imitate Christ, when we talk about demonstration of power, we are seeking the will of the Father. We are seeking to do what God will do. You know, sometimes when I, when I talk about things, be, the, the church world doing laughable things, I mean, it reminds me of uh, a friend of mine who was uh, transferring from one church to another church, and the founder of the church called him, and he says, young man, you can't leave my church. He says, look, it's a free market. Church is an open market. I can go where I want. I mean, why, why do you want to intimidate me? You know, we, we, you don't keep people in church by intimidating them. You, you know, hallelujah. It's an open market. Anyway, so, so this founder says, you know, I have an anointing. My anointing is dangerous. If you leave my church, you will die. That's, that's witchcraft. That's not God. God is not in the business of killing people. Are we together? So if somebody claims an anointing or a power that destroys the career, the future of a person simply because they left their church, that spirit is not from God. Hallelujah. Or if somebody says, you must come to my church because that's only the place where God is working. That person is, is either a liar or a fool. Or both. Anyway, sorry, I didn't say that. I, I withdraw. I withdraw my statement. J Jesus says, I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. So we imitate Christ by fulfilling the Father's will, by pursuing to do what the Father is doing. Hallelujah. The next way that we, for we, we, we imitate Christ is when we reflect the Father. Listen to Jesus. Jesus says in John 14, verse 7 to 11, he says, Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So you can say, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So Jesus is saying, you know what? I reflect the Father. I defer to the Father. The works that I do, they, I do it not in my authority, not in my power, but I do them for the glory of the Father. I do them in the name of the Father. When the church is operating in power, it's demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit. It defers the glory to the Father. That 
That's why Jesus, when somebody came to him and he said, good master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's only one good and it's the Father. What was he doing? He was deferring the glory to God. He was reflecting to God. I know we're not in the, in the church world now. Everybody, they look at the pastor and they say, Papa or Daddy, and they, and they, but they don't understand. You know, while, while I may in a spiritual sense be a spiritual father, but in reality, my role is to point you to the Father. My role is to direct you to the Father. If I draw attention to myself, whether it is because of what God is doing, whether it is because of things that are happening, if I draw attention to myself, I am fake. Because a genuine son will always honor the Father. We always defer the glory to the Father. That's what Jesus did. So we must imitate the Father by deferring the glory to the Father, by pointing the glory to the Father, by drawing people not to ourselves, but to the Father. When God uses you, he defers glory. Now look, look at Daniel. What, when Daniel was called, the people said, oh, he has the spirit of God, and he, he can interpret dreams. He says, no, 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 it's not about me. It is God. Look at Joseph. When Joseph was doing amazing things in Egypt, and they said, Joseph, you, you are so, such a wise man. He says, no, it's not me. It is God. He was pointing. He was deferring to the Father. And yet we have so many people who walk around and they start like the, the King Kong. It's like about, about them. No, 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 no. That is fake. Do, do, do you follow what I'm saying? I want to lay this foundation so that we understand that our role is to reflect the Father and to deflect the glory to him. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So if we are to imitate Christ, we need to understand what Christ was. Christ was so many things and he did so many things. But for the purposes of our series, I'm going to focus on two things. Christ was a worker of miracles. In John 11, 47, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered in a, a, a council and said, what shall we do for this man works many signs and wonders? I mean, God was so using him, so powerfully, that people say, you know what, we can't stop this guy. We don't know. We have to plan something because this guy is a miracle worker. Things were happening. When you look at the book of Acts, the same thing, they were saying the same thing. What We don't know what to do with this church. There are many signs and notable miracles are being done through these people. When will we begin to move in that power of the God so that the world will begin to say, the church of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is powerful. The kingdom of God is working wonders, signs and wonders. When can people look at your life, look at your career, look at what you are doing, can look at the wisdom that you have in the marketplace, the things that you say that are not known any other way but by the Spirit of God, and you begin to solve problems, and people say, this person is different. Why? Because it goes, God has called us into this place. Amen. Listen, let me take a detour. Somebody saying, why are you talking about about demonstration of power. The church has shied away from this. But, but listen, we live in a postmodern world. And in this postmodern world, people are seeking power. People are seeking spiritual experiences. And they're seeking a demonstration of power. And many of them have not seen any power in the church. So they are going to the demonic. I mean, if you go back to the, to the U.S., for example, I think when there was that uh, electoral contest between, uh, I think it was Obama and Hillary Clinton. You, you, I think it was. And there, there were some of the, the key advisors to Hillary Clinton were, were, were professed practitioners in witchcraft. They drew power. I mean, people were saying they were doing sacrifices and things. What are they doing? Because the world is looking for power. You know, there was a time, I mean, when, when we grew up, I mean, talking about witchcraft, it was kind of unthinkable. I mean, we would actually say, ah, some people think that lady, some people think that brother. But now people are priding themselves. I am the greatest witch around. There are now churches of witchcraft, churches of Satanism. People are seeking, and people are going unashamedly. So the dark world is moving in power and the church is embarrassed of moving in the power of God. And no, no wonder we, we are almost irrelevant. Do, do you follow what, I, what I'm saying? Jesus was a healer. 
In Luke chapter 6, verse 17 and 19, it says, And he came down with them and stood on, the, on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits. They were all healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. When we imitate Christ, when we stay in his presence, when we fellowship with him, when we are fellowshipping in the Holy Spirit, there are no anointing of God will begin to produce the miracles that God, only God can do. We begin to move in a power, in a demonstration of power that is incredible. Amen. Hallelujah. So why should we imitate Christ? We imitate Christ. In, or how should we imitate Christ? We imitate Christ as he contested against the kingdom of darkness. First John chapter 3 verse 8 B says this, for this purpose the son of man was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And yet Jesus says, as the father sent me, so I send you. The father sent me to destroy the works of the devil so the assignment of the church is to destroy the works of the devil. When we pray for the sick and they are healed. What are we doing? We are destroying the works of the devil. When you help people to break out of poverty, what are we doing? We are destroying the works of the devil. When we help people to be delivered from the from, from demonic possession, what are we doing? We are destroying the works of the devil. You see, right now the church is no challenge to the devil because they are not destroying the work of the devil. But God has called us to a place where we must demonstrate the power, where there is a kingdom confrontation with the powers of darkness that demonstrates the power of God. That demonstrates that Jesus is alive. That demonstrates that God is who he is. If Jesus actually came to destroy the works of the devil, why is the devil working in your life? Why does he have free course in our lives? Hebrews 2 verses 14 to 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he, must, he might destroy him who had power over death. That is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So Jesus was manifested. He became man to destroy the power of death. To destroy the power of him. We had power over death. And yet we have believers who still live in fear of the devil. We fear him who fears us. Who should fear us. Isn't that embarrassing? So we must imitate Christ. And how do we imitate Christ? Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Because Jesus was manifested, was anointed to destroy the works of the devil, to undo that which the enemy was doing. And we have been sent in his power. We have been sent in his authority. That's why he says go into the old, into the whole world to preach the gospel. Heal the sea, casting out demons. Why? Because we are continuing the work that he had started. He says, oh, healing all those who are oppressed by the devil. This is just for free. I know there are some people who believe that sickness is from God, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says Jesus was healing all who were oppressed by the devil, which means sickness is an oppression of the devil. So when I accept sickness, when I, when I reconcile myself to a sick condition, I'm accepting what the devil is doing. And yet I stand up and say, Jesus is Lord of my life. Shouldn't I be able to say, devil, take your hands off me. I am God's property. You have no right here. Jesus is Lord in my life. Luke 13, 6, and Jesus says, Ought not this woman... Whom Satan had bound for these 18 years be loosed from this bondage. So he was saying, when somebody is sick, when somebody is ill, it's a bondage of the devil. And God has assigned the church and anointed the church with the Holy Ghost that we may break the bondages of the enemy. So when Jesus healed the sick, he was doing the will of the Father. And in doing his Father's will, he was destroying the works of the devil. And that is still the assignment of the church. Hallelujah. So we must imitate Christ. Imitate Christ in how? In preaching the kingdom of God. 
In Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, the Bible says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And in Luke 4, verse 43, And he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. So Jesus was sent to preach the kingdom. You see, when you are preaching a kingdom, let, let me just tell you this. You see, a kingdom talks about a domain. Dominion. It talks about a rulership. It talks about power. So you cannot effectively preach the kingdom without a demonstration of power. Read your Bibles. Anytime there was a challenge in the nation of Israel, when, when God wanted to show himself, there was a power encounter. There was a God had to show. He raised somebody who says, you know what? I'm, I'm God, the God who answers by fire is God. There was a demonstration of power. When God showed himself mighty, he was saying there's no one else like him. You see, when he, when he sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, the, what we call the plagues was really a demonstration of power where God was judging the gods of Egypt and demonstrating there is no God but God. God. So the church of Jesus Christ must begin to move back into that place where we demonstrate the power of God and demonstrate there is only one God and God is able, is willing, he is ready to do that if only we can believe him. If only we can position ourselves to say we are available and we are ready to imitate Christ to preach the kingdom, not as a matter of talk, but as, as a demonstration of power. Hallelujah. You see, we must imitate Christ in that he performed mighty works of power. John 7, 31 says this, and many of the people believed in him and said, when the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these, which this man has done? People were so shocked by the, the, the amount of power. I mean, the signs and the wonders that Jesus did. In Mark 6, verse 1 to 2, the, this was says, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his ears? In other words, not only was he talking, it was not a man of talk, it was a demonstration of power. So as he spoke the word, as he ministered the word, there was the power of God that accompanied the word. Isn't that what Jesus says in Mark chapter 16? He says, go preach the gospel. He says, this sign shall follow you as you go preaching the gospel. So when we begin to believe God and begin to operate in that power which God is calling us to, when we do that, we are demonstrating the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen to Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 5. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one? Are you the Messiah? Or do we need to look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see. The lamb walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. You see, when we begin to operate as people who imitate Christ, we'll be able to say, the blind see, the lame walk, deaf ears are opened, the dead are raised. God has done it before and you'll do it again. I'm, I'm not talking about just what he did in the Bible days. I mean, if you look at revival history, if you look at what God was doing, even right here in South Africa, I mean, when, when, when we, in the 1900s, there was such a move of God that it was almost daily. People were being raised from the dead. Things were happening. People were being healed and doctors were astonished. I mean, when the AFM was, was established, it was established in power. Even in our own lifetime, we have seen God do things. But there was a point in time when the church became, became embarrassed because they, they didn't see the miracles anymore. They didn't see what God was doing and then we fold and we, we, we stood back. We were embarrassed. We are almost like the children of Israel. Fully armed. The children of Ephraim. Fully armed. They turned their back in battle. So the church has turned back in battle. I, I don't know about you. But 
I mean, I, I, I live in a different world. I, I, I probably, I don't know if it applies to you, but I've been in situations where I've had, I'm not just talking Africans, I'm talking about the kingdom of darkness demonstrating power. I've been in situations, sometimes in boardrooms, where somebody just tells you, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I, I have power. I can make things happen. And, and, I'm, and some of them will tell you, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm a Freemason. I belong to this uh, club. And I mean, there is so much power in us. Come join us. Somebody who actually wanted to recruit me into Freemason and says, you know what, there's so much power. We can give you power. Then I say, sorry, you are too late. I was already given power. Because X1 says, you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So, sorry, I already have power. I just wasn't walking in it. Now I have, and, 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 but, but, but what I'm saying is, the world out there is not embarrassed yeah. of walking in the demonic power. So why is the church embarrassed of walking in the power of the king? Just asking. Hallelujah. Skip, skip. We imitate Christ by demonstrating the kingdom. Matthew chapter 12, verse 27, 28. He says, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive, out, drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. The same scripture is given in Luke chapter 11, verses 19 to 20. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. On, on Friday, I was telling, in, the, in prayer school, I was telling people about uh, this encounter I had with this lady who, who called and said, you know, I am... Uh, I'm a born-again believer, but I'm struggling with witchcraft. And initially, I was kind of scandalized. How can a believer struggle with witchcraft? Is he saying that I have become a witch and I'm born again? What is the story? So, so I called her up and I said, look, what's the story? And she told me this incredible story. And she says, you know what? I, I, I got involved with this guy and he had just divorced his wife. The wife was uh, uh, into these dark arts. And now I'm beginning to have these problems. And I, for the last five years, I've been terribly sick. And I, I've gone to doctors, uh, things that move in my body. And the doctors can't do anything. I went to pastors and pastors would pray for me. Nothing was happening. And, and, and she was telling me all this story. And it's almost like she's advertising the power of darkness. And some, we're talking on the phone and something in me says, no, 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 this, this is not right. This, this is not acceptable. How can the kingdom of darkness prevail? How can we say greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world? And she says, you know what, while, I'm, while we're talking about it, Pastor, you know, if those who tried to pray for me, as they were praying, I was choked. I felt like I was dying and I was suffocating. And I'm saying, so why are you calling me? It's like a defiance. It's like saying, don't even pray. Because now think about it. I'm on the phone. I'm this side. And I don't even know where she was. She was somewhere in Jobek. And she's on the phone. And I'm saying, now if I am praying, and then if you are choked to death while I am praying, and somebody will say, let's check when she died. She was alone in the, in the house. What was doing? And they find my number. They said, this brother was talking. She was talking to this guy. You, you know, I was, so it was very scary. And I was saying, now should I pray for her or should I not? You, you, you begin to pray, you know that prayer, you know that scripture that says, you know, uh, there's no temptation that has come our way that is not common to men. But with every temptation, God provide, provides a way of escape. I was beginning to pray, Lord, provide a way of escape here. I need to get out of this call. You know what I'm saying? And, and by the way, because when she called, actually she, she started by sending an email because she was responding to a digital, to digital evangelism. And she says, I've been to so many pastors and no one can help me. And I'm saying, okay, am I going to be a statistic? <laughs> so so I, I then ministered to her and I, and I prayed for her. And, and I started praying. I say, we would pray and I say, okay, what are you feeling? She says, oh. So the first time she says, oh, the thing is moving now. It's, uh, it's below my jaw. And I'm saying, oh, oh now it's, this is the choking now. What, what's, what's going to happen here? But, 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 but you know, in, in uh, north of the Limpopo, we have a saying that, uh, I don't know how, I, I need somebody to help me interpret this. It says, 
Can somebody put it in English for me? I need a better translator. <laughs> yeah, if, if you eat, an, if you are going to eat a dog, go for a bulldog. Yeah, you know. So, so, so I said, you know what? I'm already stuck in this. I'm in it, so there's no backing off. So, so I, I then I, I actually got to a point of being angry. So we, then we prayed. We, then he says, oh, now it has gone down. And I said, okay, on a scale of one to ten, where is it? He says, I can feel it at about eight. He said, oh, I mean, after all those powerful prayers, move just to ten to eight, that's what I said. <laughs> you know? so, so I said, okay. And I said, I, I, I moved my, my, my faith muscles a little bit, but really, I was both in faith and in fear. You know, <laughs> you, you, you can't break out, but you can't, you know what I'm saying. So I said, okay. I said, now. Then I gave him a little bit of script because she remember she she's born again. And I said, okay, this is what we are going to do. We prayed again. Then we, we went, bam. Then it says, oh, okay, something has happened. It has gone down to five. I said, okay. I said, hallelujah. Now I, I was going to feel like a man of God now. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, come on, yeah, come on. And so, so he said, okay, let, let's pray one more time. So when he started praying, I started hearing screaming on his head. And I said, okay. I said, hold on. You, you, you be quiet. What, what's happening now? <laughs> How can you start screaming when we are 85? You are supposed to be, this demon is supposed to be going out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't look at me like that. You guys. So, 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 so I said, let's, let's have a one more go. So we, we, we prayed some more. She says, yeah, now the, the, what I'm feeling is just, uh, so no, when I said, why are you screaming? She says, oh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like uh, something is taking off my shoulders. Then I said, so why should you be screaming? Because if it's taking off your shoulder, the demon is coming out. So what's, now you almost, uh, I, can't, I couldn't say to her because I'm supposed to be a man of God. I can't say to her, you scared me out of my wits. You know? <laughs> so, so, I can't, so, so many times as pastors, we, we, we pretend to be brave. <laughs> but, but remember, it's not me. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a messenger. I'm not the one with the power. So we, we so we got to about a two and nothing was happening. That there was no change happening. She was saying, I'm no longer in pain, but, uh, the, the, but I, the, the movement has stopped, but uh, I, I still kind of feel there's something. And this is where I wanted to say, we do not walk by sight, but by faith. But, but you know, when somebody is in, in this kind of situation, that doesn't cut it. Yeah. So then I had this light bulb moment and I said to her, Wait a minute. You said you went to a few sangomas. You went to this. What did they give you? Yeah. Then she says, oh, somebody gave me some water to drink. I said, so you have that water in the house? She said, yes. I said, I want you to throw it away. Because as long as you have it, you are giving room to the devil. You are giving authority to the devil. So I want you to throw it away. So she, and then I said, what else do you have? She said, I was also given this white cloth. And I said, okay, I want you to throw away that white cloth. And then we will pray again. So I, then I said, okay, we moved from 10 to 2. Now we need these things cast out. Uh, then we can pray. So she says, okay, I'll do that and I'll call you. So I gave him about five days. And then she reached out and she said, no, actually it was the next day. She sent me a message and says, you know what? I, had, I slept well. I didn't have any problems. I had not slept in a long time. But uh, I still kind of, although the thing is not moving, I still feel it's, uh, there's a little bit left. Then I said, okay, have you disposed of the water? Yes. Have you disposed of the cloth? Ah, no, you know, I live in an apartment. So I will, uh, uh, I have to be able to go out and uh, throw it and burn it. Because I said, I want you to burn it. So I said, okay, we thank God for the victory that you have had so far. But you are not yet completely free. So I will pray for you once you have cast out, once you have burned this thing out. So we are waiting for the last round. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know why you are clapping hands, but, <laughs> but the point I'm saying is the world out there is, is in, in trouble. I mean, if you had to just sit and talk to people, people are being tormented by the devil. And we have the answer, but we are afraid. Now listen to me, church. If we are to imitate Christ, we are going to have to allow the finger of God 
to cast out demons. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know what you are saying. You are saying, but I am a friend. So am I. But you do it anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must demonstrate the kingdom. John 21 verse 25 says, and there are so many other things that Jesus did, which if it were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. I mean, God did incredible things and mighty things, and we are going to see a demonstration of power. I think we have actually begun to see it. Only that we have, God has been doing incredible things. And the only challenge is that we, we accept some kind of miracles and we are afraid of some kinds of miracles. Do, do you remember some time ago, I think about 18 months ago, we felt led to say, go buy houses. There's a grace to buy houses. And others went and they look back, they, they, they bought houses. They don't know how they bought houses. They, they can't explain it. Yeah. But they got houses. Let me just see, by the raising of the hand, how many people had a miracle of being able to buy a house where they had been told that it can't be done. Just, just raise your hand. Let me see you. Anybody in this house? See that and 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 So God is doing miracles. You understand what I'm saying? So we can accept a financial miracle, but we are scared of miracles, of healing. We are scared of certain kind of miracles, but the God who does those miracles is still the same God. So we are already walking in that miracle power. Only that, you see, because when it was my house, I actually had the faith. I had to go for it because, Lord, I definitely need this house. So we had the faith to go for it, and we entered into it. But some of these things we're saying, mm, should I actually believe God for it? Three months ago, we, we talked about God giving unusual salary increases, promotions, new jobs, new businesses. I think we talked about March, April, and May. Can I see by raising of hand, even those who are online, you, you can type if you are. Anybody who had an incredible financial miracle, a promotion, an increase within those three months, let me see your hand. Anybody? You see, so God is working. Look at all those hands. God is working. So we actually see these miracles. So why are we limiting God in these other things? If you have seen a miracle of God's provision, if you, had, you got a job which you, you actually thought you were not qualified for, and some of the people, they got miracles where you say, you know what, I remember one guy coming to me and saying, Doc, I, I, I got this job and I, I don't even, I'm not even qualified for it. I was promoted. They said, we know you are not qualified for it. Then I said, welcome to the club. Amen. Most of the people who had promotions from God were not qualified for it. Yeah. What did Joseph know about ruling a country? I mean, from prison. What did David know about running a country or being a general from taking care of sheep? What did Daniel know about bureaucracy and running a civil service when he was a slave? See, so don't limit God to your capacity. Don't limit God to your competence because God is beginning to work and, and promote people beyond their competence, beyond their capacity so that he can demonstrate who he is. So the God who promotes you is able to sustain you, is able to give you the wisdom, is able to give you the knowledge, who is able to lead you along the way. But we need to press in and believe God. Listen to John 20 verses 30 and 31. And I'm winding down to a close. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. 
So, the, remember we said the power of God is demonstrated for a purpose. It's a sign. It's to lead to a truth and encounter. It's to lead to a faith shift. It's to lead people to come to the knowledge of God. It's not just power for power's sake. It's not just saying, you know what, I want to demonstrate who is bigger. No, 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 it's not about that. God is intentional. Whatever God does is for a purpose. He is demonstrating. The Bible says that when the disciples went and the apostles went in the book of Acts, it says with the great power they gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus. So the signs and wonders, the miracles that were happening, it was for the purpose of demonstrating that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Lord. It's still the same purpose that God is doing miracles, to demonstrate to a dying world that there is only one Savior, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we should expect God to do the same miracles, the same signs, the same wonders as he did in the Bible. So I close with 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. This is what Paul says. Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Imitate me just like I imitate Christ. We are called to imitate Christ. We are the body of Christ. You know, the Bible clearly says that Jesus, when he rose again from the dead, God set him on the right hand of God the Father, far above all principality and power. And the Bible says he's seated waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. Who is going to make his enemies his footstool is the church. But it's not a powerless church. It's not a weak church. It's not a timid church. It's a church that demonstrates power. It's a church that confronts the forces of darkness. It's a power that goes around in the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost and heals all those who are oppressed and sets free those whom the enemy has destroyed. People who look the, the devil in the eye and say, devil, bite the dust. Devil, you are defeated. My king of kings defeated. You destroyed you with the power of a death and you begin to walk in the glory and the power of God. See, when you read the book of Acts, you'll see incredible miracles, strategic miracles that God did. And it led to salvation of strategic people. And I believe, God, that we are going to have incredible encounters. Some of the miracles, some of the things that God is going to do are going to do, happen outside ourselves. There are people who are going to have encounters with God. People who come to church and say, you know what, I, God, I had a visitation from God. And because God told me this and he directed me to come so that you may lead me to Christ. Even in your own lives, expect people to come to you and say, How, what can I do to be saved? God has shown me that I should come to you. You are the one who is going to help me. When I talk about a demonstration of power, I'm not talking about this man of God-centric thinking that says, you know what, there is this anointed man who is going to go to do things. I'm talking about you. God is willing to use you. The Bible says, believers shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say prophets. It didn't say apostles. It didn't say pastors. It didn't say evangelists. It says believers. When you as a believer begin to believe God, take him at his word, and you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Because that's what God is promising. The revival we are going to see, the move of God we are going to see is not going to start from the pulpit. It will be from the pews. It's people who believe God, who will dare to take him at his word and say, Lord, I'm tired of a useless, fruitless, empty Christianity. I want to walk in your power. I want to walk in your glory. I want to demonstrate who you, is, who you are. I want to preach the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. It's a matter of power. Somebody must stand up and say, Lord, why is there no power in my life? If the kingdom of God is in me, if the king lives in me, why is there no evidence of power in my life? I want to pray. This is just an introduction. We're going to go deeper as we get into the word of God, as we search the scriptures. God watches over his word to perform it. Begin to expect God to move in your life. Begin to expect God to do things in your life. You know, God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able. I want to pray two prayers today. I will ask every head bowed in this auditorium. You know, if you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this Jesus who we want to imitate, 
the very first thing to do to imitate Christ is to bow to him as Lord and Savior. So if you don't know Christ, if your sins are not forgiven you and you don't know that where you go when you die, I want to pray with you. In this moment, Jesus will show himself strong. He will show himself mighty. He will forgive your sins, cleanse you. He has already paid the price for the forgiveness of your sins. So if you are here and you say, I don't have a relationship with God, both on site and online, I want to just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're saying, I don't have a relationship with this Jesus. I don't know him. My sins are not forgiven me. Just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. I don't see any hand here on site. But I want us to pray this prayer to help. There may be somebody who is watching us online who has raised their hand and I want us to pray with them. So I want everybody to pray with me and say, Father God, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I ask you to show yourself as God as mighty, as powerful, as Lord. I ask you to work in my life, in my heart, in a way that I know, beyond a shadow of doubt, that Jesus is alive and that he is Lord of Lords and King of Glory. I thank you, Father, even as I come to you and I ask you to forgive my sins and make me your child. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. He died. He rose again. Now he is seated on the right hand of God the Father as Lord of Lords and King of Glory. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Satan, I reject you with everything that is yours. You have nothing in me and I have nothing in you. I am a child of God. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for hearing me and making me yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer while you are watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, there's a contact number, a WhatsApp number and an email address that are coming up right now. I want you to just write to us you know, or just or inbox us and say, I prayed that prayer. We'll reach out to you and we'll be able to minister to you. Thank you so much. God has heard you. He has changed your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. I want to pray a second prayer. I want to minister to anybody who is sick, who you are unwell. You know, at Action Conference, when, when I ministered, I prayed for people and number of people have come to me and given me some of their testimonies. One of the most amazing testimonies I had was uh, a lady I knew, a member of our, our cell group, and she said she came to see us uh, a week after the conference, and she said you know, I'm so excited. And I said, why are you excited? She says, you know, for five years I had this uh, terrible pain and heaviness one side of my head. I went to doctors and I, 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 they couldn't do anything. I, I, I just had this pain. I was not myself. And we were not even aware. And the husband was with her. And she says, he says, you know, we, we tried everything we could. Nothing was happening. And, but when we prayed in church, she said, I, I felt a heat come over my face. And as the heat came over my face, I almost fell. And I had to, to support myself on the, on, the chair, on the chairs that were in front of me. And, but she says, apart from the heat, nothing else happened. And so at the end of the service, I said, you know, 
You may have been healed right now. Or you may have seen a change. Or you may be healed as you go. And when Pastor Tom came immediately after that, he, he emphasized that point. So she said, you know, it's amazing. As I went home, the, that heaviness completely disappeared. And she says, it's now a week that I am myself. It's the first time I'm feeling light. I'm feeling, you know, I'm, I, I can't even tell how, uh, I can't express how I'm feeling because I had this heaviness. It was almost like, I don't know how to put it. It's like the, there's a heavy weight that was on half a face and all disappeared because God came through. And that God is here. That God wants to meet you at your point of need. So if you have any form of illness, particularly those who have, you, you know how as believers, sometimes we get to a point where we, where we, we acclimatize, we condition ourselves to our illness. You know, there, there are some things, you know what, I, I've learned how to deal with this. I, 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 I gave up trying to believe God. I want to pray with you. And I want us to believe God that God will heal you. I also have a sense that there may be, I don't know whether it's one person or it's two people, but but, but you had this sense, you had this upset tummy for, for a while and it's almost like you, 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 you feel like it's a, a result of food poisoning and this has been tormenting you for a while. I believe God wants to heal you. And I also want to pray for somebody who may have a congenital disease. Congenital disease is a, a disease that goes all the way to birth. It, it, it's a, you were born that way. Or it may be a child who was born that way. It may be and something about, uh, that it, it is order that the child or yourself or somebody you know was born with it. I want us to pray and believe God. I believe that God wants to heal these and many others. Because God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Any form of sickness is a work of the devil and Jesus heals. And that Jesus is alive and is ready to move and heal you right now. So if you are any one of those two people, whether you are online or you are right here, or you, are, you have any other physical condition that you are believing God for, I want you to stand. I want to I want, I want us to pray. Spirit, I ask you to to come now and glorify Jesus as you heal your children who are oppressed by the devil. Glorify Jesus. Even as Jesus said, this sickness is unto, not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. As you heal your people, receive the glory. As you move by your spirit right now, Lord, As you set people free, as you heal them, we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your bodies and I say, be aligned with the word of God. Be healed as the spirit of God moves on you right now. In the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of God, spirit of the living God, move and heal your people. Set your people free from the oppression of the devil. And I declare right now, by the power and the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, move by your power and heal your people. Both those who are here on site and those who are online, let your healing virtue flow right now. And I say, be healed in the name of Jesus. 
be set free by the power of the name of Jesus. Father, demonstrate your power because the kingdom of God is not a mere talk, but it is a power. I speak the power of God. I speak the healing virtue of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare it is so, for it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 I want you to just check yourself if you feel something happening in your body or if you feel something has happened. If, uh, if it's a condition where, for example, you were in pain, some conditions are difficult to tell on the spot to say something has happened. But if it's, uh, there was pain and you notice that the pain is, uh, there's a 60% improvement. In other words, the pain has gone down 60% and above. Or you feel a 60% change. I want you to just raise your hand wherever you are. If you feel there's been a change, say that and thank you. God bless you. you. Feel a change. Okay, that's fine. If you feel a change that is 30 to 60%, a slight change, a slight improvement, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray some more. See that hand. See that hand. Okay. Let's pray. Oh, if there's 60 and below, I want to pray some more. I believe God that we'll see another set of improvement. Father, I thank you that you are God who is faithful. That which you have begun, you can complete in the lives of your people. So I believe you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we believe that, Father, you are healing, you are improving. There is a recovery in the lives of your people. For those who are in pain, those who are in a condition, Father, where they are feeling that, Father, they, they, they have the, this is an oppression of the devil. Father, we declare right now that in the name of Jesus, a divine intervention. We declare a divine intervention. We declare a divine intervention. We declare an improvement in the name of Jesus. Father, show yourself strong in the lives of your people. Father, we speak a change. We speak a change. We speak a change. And we declare the enemy is defeated by the power of the name of Jesus. Father, it is by faith in the name of Jesus that they are not they are being healed. It's not because of a man, it's, but it's because of faith in the name of Jesus. And today we exert our faith in that name. And we believe you for an incredible working of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, devil, you are defeated. We rebuke you and we command you to take your hands off the people of God. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So for those who are below 60 and you are feeling a further change, just show me by raising your hand. Let me see. If you see any, any further improvement. I see that hand. Thank you. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. Hallelujah. This is what I want us to do. You know, what God has started, He will complete. If you have noticed an improvement, I want you to continue saying, Lord, you are faithful to complete that which you have started. I know some, some may have conditions which are difficult. You, you can't tell an immediate change. But I want you to be watching yourself, whether you are diabetic, whether it was high blood pressure, whatever it is, whatever condition that you can't tell immediately, God has begun working in you. I want you to begin to observe and say, there is a change. Expect God to move. Hallelujah. Let's give God a round of applause. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him the glory. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you the glory. We thank you that you are moving in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you will complete that which you have started. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, this morning's uh, offering message is coming from Psalm 67, verse 5 to 6. It says, may the people praise you, God. May all the praises, people praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. And one of the areas that we... I would like to encourage you to demonstrate God's power is in the area of giving, in the area of offering. And from this word, I want to focus on the concept of harvest. I think we all get excited when we hear about harvest, about blessings, all those um, scriptures that talk about blessings in our life. But there's an aspect as well about harvest. 
the journey to that harvest. And um, we've been talking about entering the, the promised land. And we can see the journey of the Israelites as they were going towards the harvest. There was a lot of hard work. There was a lot of um, cultivation that was needed in their lives. And one of the things, um, there was a lot of sacrifice as well. And one of the things is, as we are walking through the journey, at times we are discouraged. But today, I just want us um, to be encouraged that even as we give, may we cultivate the seed, the little seed that God has planted in your life. At times you will feel the pain. At times you will feel discouraged. But I just want you to focus on cultivating. I think most of the times as well, even when you talk about the harvest, uh, the earthly harvest, when you talk about farming, you know, what happens is we prepare the land. When you talk about a summer crop, I think around November, October, the farmers actually start preparing the land, right? And then what happens is it is before the rains have even come. But at times we have more belief in the earthly work than in the work of our Father. Because that demonstrates for me, knowing that at some point in time, the rain will come. The rain will water that seed. And even some farmers do what we call, I think, dry planting. That even before there's a sign of rain, they actually go and plant the seed. And so it is in our lives. I just want to encourage, it doesn't matter the circumstances that you are in, plant the seed. Cultivate the seed. And one of the areas that you can do that is giving not because of your capacity, not because of the circumstances around you, but because you know our Father in heaven who give us the harvest. Amen. And this morning, I just want us um, to come in front and give our offering and tithe. And uh, for your tithe and special offering, the, uh, the ushers will give you um, envelopes. And for those who can transfer there, our standard bank details, um, that you can give to. We also have the Zappa and Snapscan facilities, and we also have our swiping facilities after the service. Amen. Can I kindly ask you to bring your offering, and I will pray for the offering. Lord, I just want to thank you for the word this morning, that even Doc has given us the word that you must demonstrate your power. And I pray and declare that for everyone that is giving this morning, even for those that are not able to give, Lord, may you demonstrate your power. May they cultivate, may they plant that seed that you have given them in, in their hands to give towards the kingdom. Amen. Oh my. 